my name is Maurice Green. I'm six foot seven, 250 pounds, and I'm the Crochet Boss. Maurice Green is an MMA fighter, an ultimate fighting championship heavyweight. And when he's not thinking about where to throw his next punch, he's got an itch to stitch. Man, I've been crocheting for the better part of 15 years, and my stitches are impeccable. Your grandma can make what I make, but my colorway is hidden better. I make and sell hats. I make a beanie, I make a flip hat, I make a headband. Those are my staples. There's another way for me to be creative, and it's calming for me. I wanted to take the two sides of me and show people that MMA fighters are not always crazy jerks or, you know, always have to be intense. I crochet, I can't be that mean. I love it. I'm in. Joining me now out from Albuquerque, New Mexico, the crochet boss himself, Maurice Green. Maurice, welcome. Clearly, I'm a fan of crochet. I have on one of my favorite lines, Love Shack Fancy. I, I just love the texture and the way it feels. I am emotionally, though, attached to your name, the crochet boss. Who gave you that name? Did you come up with that yourself? I came up with my own name. Um... Kind of what happened is, you know, I used to go by the pirate and um, I was crocheting this whole time I, and my heart's like doing fashion and making clothes and I wanted to kind of combine both of them. And these days you have to stand out. You know, everybody can do what I do, but how do you set yourself apart? And it's bringing the two things that I love into one. That's, that, that, that's when the crochet boss was born. Kinda. I have to tell you, I'm, I'm looking at you and all I can see are your huge hands. And I'm like, <laughs> how does someone with hands that big move and manipulate this delicate fabric the way that you do? Who taught you this? Um, Actually, you know, uh, a girl taught me how to knit when I worked at a, uh, when I was working corporate America. She brought me to Joanne's. I learned how to cro I learned how to knit with uh, knitting needles, and my fiance told me to get on YouTube and learn how to crochet. And thirty minutes later, I made a hat, and here we are. Fifteen. You years, made your first later. hat thirty minutes after starting this whole process and learning it. Well, I learned how to knit first. Okay. But once I learned how to crochet, I was already kind of in the crafty art. But once I learned how to crochet, it took me about thirty minutes. It looked terrible. Like it wasn't beautiful <laughs> um, by any Well, I don't think but... anyone would tell you. They would have been too afraid to tell you. I mean, a lot of this journey, though, ties into the sport, which you participate in. As it is one of the most brutal things that, that anyone can do, I'll be honest with you. But here you are, <laughs> this fighter, or at least going into this world of fighting, and you found that this was a way to release some of the nerves when, when you first started out? Um, so yeah, so at first I would, uh, I bring it with me. So, I mean, you sit there fight week, you're, <laughs> you're there for a week. So you need to fill that time. Um, I don't really play a lot of video games and if I do, it's with my kids, you know? So this is what I do. You know, usually we're watching one of the kids movies or something and this keeps my hands busy, you know? Okay. So you're, so you have a fight. Let me just visualize this. You're getting ready, you're in the gym, you're practicing your kicks and just, again, these lethal things to take someone down. And then when you're done with your training, you then say, I know what I can do, I'll crochet. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. What's and the sometimes, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I'll crochet into the wee hours of the morning. 